hello students welcome to our next video lecture that is on our vmcp lecture series that is on the maintenance and overloading of the steering system right in the last video we saw about the suspension system and as, as i have already told you that the steering and suspension system are always interconnected when we are doing the maintenance of either one of them the maintenance or the change in one of the system will always affect the second system so whenever we maintain the system both the system needs to be maintained together so that the effect of the one system generally does not affect the second system and both the system will be adjusted simultaneously right so let's start the maintenance the procedure for overloading and the, the characteristics which require to be maintained or which require to be adjusted whenever we do the maintenance and overloading of the steering system for that the first thing that needs to be learned about the steering system is steering geometry right so in case of the steering geometry you might have seen about the camber angle that is positive negative angle second is to which is to in and to out right so all this thing you might have seen in the subject that is automobile system and third one is the kessler angle that can be positive angle and negative kessler angle depending on the steering axis direction if it is inward side then it is positive if it is outward side then it is negative kessler the negative kessler can be seen in the background you can see the trolley which have the negative kessler otherwise all the vehicle have the positive kessler in rather than that the force system is the steering axis inclination and the kinetic inclination of steering axis inclination the inclination of the same steering axis which we measured in case of the kessler but what is steering axis inclination is that whenever we see the steering axis from the front side then the angle of the steering will be known as the steering axis inclination will also be seen in the further as well what is steering axis inclination and why and how it can be adjusted and the fourth one is the to in and to out that we see that whenever we see the vehicle from the top part then the angle that the wheels create that is known as the to in the difference from the front side of the car and rear side of the car that the difference of those will be known as to angle or the to distance that can be in if the car is tilted in one side and to out will be when the car is tilted at outward side right next thing is that the steering geometry in case of whenever we change the steering geometry or whenever we need to adjust those angles right and these angles are very important for the driving of vehicle any drastic change in any of this angle or any of this parameter will affect our vehicle performance very very much right the steering is the most important that we can lose the control of the vehicle and we cannot properly control the vehicle if any of this angle is being compromised for that whenever we need to adjust those angles then what we need to do is we need to do the v alignment Right, you might have heard this word V alignment. The V alignment gives you the chance to adjust all these components whenever there is a problem in vehicle performance or problem in controlling the vehicle. Right, so advantage of V alignment is that it will provide you again the directional stability. Right, whenever we are driving the vehicle, it will provide you the stability. The vehicle will be driven in a stable manner. Right. Second thing is the perfect rolling condition on the steer. Like whenever we roll the vehicle, whenever the vehicle is getting rolled in straight direction, in that case as well, steering will be proper and vehicle will roll in the straight direction. There are chances that in some cases the vehicle will pull towards one side. If the angle of the steering geometry or if the camber angle of the two tires is not equal. Right, so these things are very important for the vehicle drive. Third one is the recovery after completing the turn. Right, here comes our angle that is steering axis inclination. Right, whenever we take the turn, after taking the turn, 
the CLV comes to the original position by itself. If we just take our hands off our steering wheel, then steering will rotate itself back to its original position and keep uh, will take the our tires in its straight position once again. Right. So the tires will come to its straight position without any effort. That happens because of the steering axis inclination. Steering axis inclination generates the movement whenever vehicle is turning because of the centrifugal force and centripetal force. The cornering force is generated and that cornering force generates a pneumatic trail. That pneumatic trail generates a couple that is known as self-frightening torque. The self-frightening torque helps you to bring back the steering wheel to the straight position. Right, so these three are the advantages after doing the wheel alignment of the vehicle. Now let's see a detail about the wheel alignment, why wheel alignment is required and what factors will the wheel alignment affect. Right, so start with the importance of the wheel alignment. So the wheel alignment is required if our wheel is facing any problem. For example, if the wheel is wobbling, like wobbling means the movement of this type. Secondly, if the steering is getting harder, then wheel alignment is required. The wheel alignment can be done for the wheel's motions and those angles needs to be adjusted whenever the wheel alignment is necessary in the vehicle. Wheel alignment can be understood by its causes, the principle and the application of all those angles needs to be measured, read and that should be understood first, the steering problem, the symptoms and causes and demands. Let's see what can be the problems in the steering system. Now in case of the power steering, if the hydraulic fluid is contaminated, then that can affect our steering. So if that is contaminated, then hydraulic fluid will be replaced. If there is friction in the steering leakage, if the tire pressure is uneven, and if the body frame is bent, then those things can ruin the improper tire wheel and also vehicle can pull at one side and also steering kickback can be happen. Steering kickback means you will face the steering towards the driver side. The improper tire wheel can happen because there can be a reason of the harsh driving or the tire wheel can be happening improper because of the high weight on the tire or if the wheel alignment angles are not proper then that can happen. Generally in the front wheel drive the weight is mostly on the front side. So that the, to solve that problem what we will do is we will rotate the tire that is on a star rotation. We will swap the front tires with our rear tires at time to time. So by the tire rotations, the wheel on all the four tires can be maintained even. Also, the tire pressure can affect the vehicle performance. So to do that, we need to check the tire pressure with time to time. Steering can pull towards the one side, right? That is known as torque steer. If the steering is getting pulled towards one side, then that can be problem with the suspension system as well. If the suspension is broken, then the steering will tend to move towards a one direction, even though we want to go in the straight direction. Right? Steering kickback. The steering kickback can happen in the hard surface or the surface which has too many uneven road. Right, so on that, the bump can also create the steering kickback, the potholes can also create the kickback towards the driver side, kickback in the inside of the vehicle. On the smoother roads, if there is a kickback, then there can be a problem in the suspension system once again. If the suspension is older or the shock absorber is older, then it can create the kickback of the steering. For that, we will adjust and replace the defective shock absorber. And we saw about the procedure of replacing shock absorber. Next thing is whenever we do the alignment, we need to measure some angles, we need to adjust some angles. For that, the first one is the camber angle. And we need to consider those simple things. Adjustments will be made inside the wheel assembly to ensure the an efficient and safe drive. Wheel alignment gives the safe driving after the change. 
Right. First thing, going to out. Second thing, positive and negative camber angles. Third thing, positive and negative caster angles. Fourth thing is the GC height that should be proper. Next thing is the splint axis inclination. And last one is the turning radius. The radius which is created during the turn. First, going and to out. Now, towing throughout the first figure, you will see has the zero toe, which means in that there is no towing and no toe, that is zero toe. Second figure you will see is the toe in, in which the tires is in the inward side, and third one is the toe out, in which tires is in the outward side. Right, the correct toe angles will improve the tire life. The second thing is the camber angle. Camber angle is the angle of tire that is see from the front side. If the tire is straight, then it is zero camber. If the tire is tilted towards the inward side, then it is negative camber. And if the tire is tilted towards the outer side, then it is called as positive camber. The camber angle will give you the tire life, improve tire life, and mainly it will improve the stability of the vehicle. Right? The proper stability will be provided if camber angle is correct. The third one is the caster angles. The caster angle is the axis, steering axis angle when we see from the sideways. If the steering axis angle is inward side from the vertical axis, then it is positive caster, right? And if the caster angle is on the outward side, then it is negative caster. After the caster angle, by using the caster angle, it will provide the Stability as well as it will provide the cornering stability. Right, the caster angle helps during the cornering. Now, next thing is the steering axis inclination or kingpin inclination. Right, so steering axis inclination is helpful when we are braking the vehicle. At that time, the stability of the steering is required that will be provided by the steering axis inclination. Now, how to detect and correct the wheel alignment? For that, our vehicle will be kept on a platform and on that platform, four turn tables will be provided. So our tires will be kept on this turn table. After keeping our tires in the turn table, the holders will be attached which will give you the sensory measurements of the angles. Whenever we will attach these holders, the angles will be seen on the computer screen that will show you the camera angle, caster angle, to in and to out values. Right, so these are the values of the angle. The first one is caster, second is camber, third one is to reduce. Right, so by adjusting these holders, we can adjust the value of camber angles to be easy, which will affect our two ends. Right, so this will help you adjusting our time. We will install the targets on all the four wheels. That targets will be seen in the screen. All the four targets is red right now. That four targets needs to be green after the adjustment. Until all the four targets shows in the green reading, the wheel mal alignment is not complete. When all four turns to the green value, that shows you that all the four wheels has been adjusted for the wheel alignment. Now next thing that needs to be done is to check the steering wheel movement. For that first we will do is we will lock our steering wheel. After locking our steering wheel to the straight position, what we will do is we will apply the hand wheel so that the vehicle does not move in any position. We will do the F thing that will give you the values of the readings. We will apply the brakes and we will lock the brake so that the vehicle is again steadier in the same position. And then we will see and we will keep the back tire to the frontage type of object. After that, we will move the vehicle to the backward object until it touches to the last part of our turntable. After we touches our last part, or the backward part, we will again come towards the front side part. After completing all the possibilities, again we will apply the handbrake. After applying the handbrake, when we press the F3 button, that will show you the angle values. Right, and this is how our system or our wheel alignment test rate 
works after completing the peel alignment all the accessories which are attached to lock the steering wheel and brakes will be removed next thing is the understeer and oversteer which is simple if the vehicle does not obey your steering effort and goes towards the extra turning radius side then it is understeer if the steering turns way much more than our steering effort that is oversteer Right. So both the examples of understeer and oversteer on your screen. Also, understeer is considered as a little bit safer compared to the oversteer. You can see in the case of the understeer, the vehicle goes to the safer side. In case of the oversteer, vehicle rolls with the extra turning radius. So these two are simple components or simple characteristics of the vehicle that needs to be maintained and that can be maintained with. The vehicle driving method. If we drive a vehicle at the specified speed, in the case of the front end, the front wheel drive, if we take, try to take the vehicle at high speed, then understeer can happen. Oversteer will happen in case of the rear engine rear wheel drive, especially in case of the racing cars. That gives you the oversteering effort, and if we control the oversteer, we can convert it into the drifting. The last thing is the service of power steering. Right. Now, in case of this power steering service, first thing you can see here is the steering gear. The steering gears will be checked at periodical intervals and power steering fluid which is required in the hydraulic system will be checked. Next thing is the hydraulic pump which is used in the system and the belt which is used to run the hydraulic system which is attached to our engine will be checked periodically if there is any problem then needs to be replaced if the, there is problem with hydraulic pump then proper pressure will not be created and that pressure is required to keep our power steering in the running condition right? you can see the operation of the hydraulic pump in case of the power steering or power assisted steering next thing that we should do is to inspect all the parts Right, so these things will be checked and the flow of the fuel should also be checked with that. So all these things will be maintained in case of the power steering. Right, so in this video we saw about the steering geometry, also to adjust the steering geometry with wheel alignment and at last we saw about the power steering service in the smaller big steps. In the next lecture, we will see about the maintenance of the wheels and tires. Right, so until then, thank you so much.